And what up, fam? There we go. Anthony Dream Johnson here today, founder of the 21 Convention, the 22 Convention, Make Women Great Again, 21 Studios, co-founder of the Redman Group, founder of 21 University, and several other amazing things, and president of the Manosphere. Joining me today on an episode of 21 Live, special interview with up and coming big anti-feminist YouTuber, Jennifer Molesky. She has accumulated a channel, as you can see here, with a bunch of videos, a lot of content, a lot of fans, over 50,000 subscribers and growing. She was recently interviewed, as you can see there too, by the one and only Mr. George Bruno of the Bruno Brothers, aka the Bruno Mafia. I came out recently on her channel and George Bruno's channel, and I'm pretty sure we published it too here on 21 Studios. So without further ado, joining me today is an amazing woman, Jennifer Molesky. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here and talk to you because this yeah. is the first time we've officially met, really, mm -hmm. and uh, the people that are watching. So yeah. cool. Thank we'll you. Meeting, yeah, I'm really appreciate you coming on. And also we're gonna meet soon at the 22 convention face to face. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. It's like It'll what one month, one month and four days away. Or yeah, one month away. I think it's 31 days, 30 or 31. Okay. It's really close. Yeah, it's coming up soon. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm pumped. So you're there. I invited you on a media pass, a press pass a while ago. Uh -huh. You are you're getting a real news press pass. We've also been selling <laughs> fake news press passes, seriously, to BuzzFeed and other companies that I hate. So, really oh yeah we charge them money yeah a lot of money yeah and so, bag, so i don't trust yeah, them yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah i was gonna ask you because i've seen you what is it on good morning britain yeah. or something yep and and they, they you know they gave you some shit and whatnot yeah. but i'm i know that there's women that have talked about this like oh you're gonna make women great again how dare you talk about yeah. this but do you get that from men at all i imagine that you do sometimes yeah it's mixed I yeah, mean, the women. It's there's some women who support it. Uh, you're an obvious one. There's other women mm -hmm. on Twitter and Facebook that have really come out of the woodwork to support it. It's good, up. but it's pretty heavily, uh, pretty heavily like you know, feminist and oh, you hate women, blah blah blah, is bullshit. Uh -huh. With men, with men, I think it's a more even split. But there's still plenty of these soy boy losers who are mostly like just snakes sucking up to women, trying to get in their pants, yeah. and they, they think this. They really think by bitching at me, it's going to do that somehow, like through magic forces. It's all fucking insane. Yeah, but Anthony, the problem is it will work with some women. You know what I mean? Like I've I've gotten into it, and I don't I mean like what I would want. None of the ones I would ever touch. No, 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 and and not the ones that they're going to be happy with. But we, with your saying with the snakes, like I've yeah. I've had discussions in public about well, just how I don't like feminism, and it's amazing how many men will like oh, how dare you talk about these women like that. You know, and just like think I'm the worst person because white knights. white knights are coming at you. Yeah. 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 Those guys disgust me. But most I find at least half of the guys I would say that I talk to. I wear this hat on public a lot to pick up chicks and shit at bars. <laughs> Does it work? So, Do you like Yeah, chicks love it. Usually. Awesome. Well, it gets attention. We'll say that. It's a okay. red fucking hat. It's like a MAGA hat, first of all. Yeah. And when you read it, then they're like, Whoa, what the fuck is that? Uh huh. And then it triggers the response. Either if they're a Hillary voter or something from back in the day, then it's usually a fucking instant no. Sure. But if they're, if they're anything other than that, it usually sparks curiosity and kind of mm -hmm. shit testing. That's okay. They want to they want to want to poke me and understand like what is it? What is it? What is it? What does that mean? Yeah. So or it, they just like it. I've had mothers with the daughter. Like I've seen. I go to the redneck bar sometimes, uh -huh. and these mothers will go with their daughters and go get drunk and shit. And the moms will be hitting on me and they're like, "Oh, make women great again." I'm like, "Yeah, we're gonna make them like you." Yeah. And they, 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 <laughs> they love it. They love it. Well, I imagine if you showed that hat, not like you're picking up grandmas, but if you were to show it to a lot of grandmothers, uh -huh. they would totally understand the sentiment because, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine being 20, 30, 40 years older and seeing the transition of what's the hijacking that's happened to people's sensibilities, even. Yeah. You know, my, so grandma, my grandma died. Uh, my maternal grandmother died back in 2011 and she was like 91, 92 years old. Uh -huh. And she got married and her, you know, I got to know her really well growing up. She's like a mother to me, you know, uh, almost and I loved her so much. But looking at her life trajectory and what I know about it from what she told me and what I've heard and all these things that I saw. Um, I mean, it was so different from what we see today. She was married at 16. Uh -huh. She had my uncle at 17. This is completely normal back then. And yeah. whatever year, whatever year this was, like the 1920s or some shit or 30s or whatever. Uh -huh. I think it was the, it was the 30s at that point. And uh, yeah, that's so different. And she was married till the day my grandfather died of esophagus cancer because he was painting ships with like lead in it and shit. Oh. 
Yeah. yeah, I guess this was pretty common back then, unfortunately. Uh -huh. But that was a long marriage, and even after whole... that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, the final thing here is, though, not only were they married till the day, you know, she's very Catholic, she's super religious, mm -hmm. and not only were they married till the day he died, uh, I guess that's when the marriage ends or something. <laughs> I, I heard that works in a religious component. I don't know. I don't know but either, actually. She prayed every night for my grandfather, my in, her, her whole life after he died, mm -hmm. my entire life, every night for two hours or more. Every, oh, wow. Not just, not just religiously, like with absolute conviction, would never miss it. Uh, even in the end, when she was dying of bone cancer, like still like absolutely was committed to doing this <sighs> with a level of intensity that I've never... You, I don't know if I've ever, I have this, I mean, that's what inspires me to, in some ways to be an entrepreneur. But when you compare that to the, to the thought culture we see today, it's just this massive, massive difference. I think it speaks perfectly to what you're saying to these grandmas that would see the transition in women today over the past couple of decades. It's just crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. And, and rent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the times have changed and, and, you know, I do believe in, all things with the pendulum. So I'm curious, hmm. as I'm sure many of you are, if the pendulum still has some ways to go. If so, how much more? Or are yeah. we on the are we on the downturn? Yep. And if we still have ways to go, how can we, people who care about family and nuclear family and love and commitment and loyalty, put put a heavier weight to, to make it not go as far or to yeah. have it come down? A little fast. Well, maybe that pendulum is going to keep swinging and then like bounce, like literally smash into something and just like a rubber ball, just like bounce back. I don't know. We're going to see, but uh, it is it a very, sucks. okay. So, so everything is, is kind of poopy right now, but what an interesting time to be alive. And, and I'll say that with any, I mean, as human beings uh, and this planet through evolution, we have taken a lot of shit. I mean, life isn't easy. People are always dying. There's always somebody that wants to slit your throat. There's always a war. There's always bad, but this is just our version of it right now. And I think that we have enough free time and mental capacity to think through a solution faster than having, having but, but I don't know, but having life dictate where we're going to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I guess be more involved in the solution than just watching it, watching it happen. Yeah. As passive observers, you can get active. Mm -hmm. and of course it's happened before. I mean, the founding of the United States is a good example of that. That was a major turning point, I think in human history for the positive. Mm -hmm. And we're still feeling the positive effects from that, you know, 250 years later or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think we can make a big difference. I say this, this century, you know, it's fucked up as things are clown world and all that, uh -huh. that it's an opportunity to kill things and abolish things like feminism. Yeah. And that's the goal. And I think I'm young enough and strong enough and strong willed enough to pull that off. And this hat and this idea is like really maybe not the beginning of that, but one of the first steps of doing that. I've been obviously been, I've been an entrepreneur building my business for 14 years now. This is actually just the latest uh, iteration of that. But it's been powerful. Like you mentioned uh -huh. the Piers Morgan interview, but really we hit 150 million people this year with this message. Awesome. And it's amazing. It pissed a lot of women off, but good it inspired attention and emotions and all these things yes and you know i have a friend who introduced me to anarchy freedom and liberty and i used i used to be very liberal but he had such an articulate and intelligent way of explaining his position that after just a short amount of time i was like okay i don't want to be wrong and i want to be logical and everything he says makes sense so i'm going to go and research it myself okay so now so he totally moved me. He totally moved me in my thinking process and had me use my my intellect in a way to be not feeling based, like liberal, right? But this guy will get he'll he'll tell me how upset he is that he can't change minds. He'll be like, Yeah, I met these people and I had this two-hour conversation and what the fuck? They didn't change their mind. And how could people be so stupid? And I said, But you don't understand the impact. No one's going to not no one, but it takes a very unique person to submit that they were potentially wrong in a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the most you're going to do, and usually it works like this, you're going to pivot the mind privately and be like, oh, shit, that might be wrong. That I might have to research that. And then they're going to go in the darkness of the night and they're going to recalibrate their thinking. Yeah. And you don't know. I mean, you might piss off a feminist or 
think everyone thinks you're wrong and you're dumb, but yeah. it will shake some people's minds and get them to to think more positively for the future and man and uh, woman relations and family. I mean, yeah. that's what I think. That's my hope, at least. Yep, I agree. And I also think it's uh, it's not entirely useless to affect people's emotions. I mean, if you look at someone like yeah. Donald Trump as a politician, uh, as a recent politician, before that, he was never elected to anything in his life. He's been very effective at influencing people's emotions, both positively and negatively. He has a very, very strong support base and he pisses yeah. off an enormous amount of people at the same time, which riles up more attention to influence the way people think outside of these extreme uh, emotional pullers like that. So I think it's it's a really good thing. It's not always uh, the nicest thing to watch. It can be, well, for me, it's a lot of fun, but a lot of people are not comfortable with it. They don't uh -huh. like him being bombastic and this big giant asshole. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Well, it's I, have a, I have a yeah. particular personality for that, and I get that. So, But it's effective. I mean, look at him. He's been changing the world, like it or not. Yeah. So. It's just too bad that there's... It's, it almost seems like you have to dig for that information. You know, it's it's not given up lightly. It's certainly not given up by certain news groups at all. Yeah. I can't imagine spending four years of my life thinking about one person negatively so much that, I mean, that's all I talk about is how yeah. bad they are. Trump I mean, derangement syndrome. It's, it really is like a little miniature mental illness. It's a very, it's very temporary in human history, but <laughs> there's people that are really that triggered by him. They can't. Uh, they just can't leave, like, leave it alone. But well, now, you mentioned, hang on, yeah. you mentioned a minute ago, that was important. I really want to get into this. Uh -huh. You mentioned that you used to be liberal thinking and all these things. Yep. Um, so tell me, talk to me. I don't know much about your backstory. Like, how did you become, you're on, you're on your YouTube channel now with like this little machine gun or like a, like a rifle and you're like shooting feminism and shit. Yeah, yeah, I your shoot videos. Obviously, you don't like feminism. You said you hate it. You hate yeah. modern feminism, which I, yeah. I support. High five digitally it's fantastic <laughs> but how did you get to that point in your life because obviously i don't think at 10 years old you were like feminism stupid i'm gonna start it i'm gonna start a video channel someday and like kill feminism so how did this how did this transition or this process happen okay um i i find it similar to i said to my husband recently uh right after uh the guy got shot what's his name the there guy that's i mean there's yeah, a lot of people no, getting shot lately the the person that started this whole Black Lives Matter and and whatnot. Oh, George when, Floyd. Yes. Oh. About a month. He, got, after, he didn't get shot. He was uh, that was a whole different. Oh thing. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of shit going on lately. I get it. So I said to my husband about a month after that, I said I've never been so aware of race before. You know, like leaving the house, I'm like white, white, black, Hispanic. <laughs> like this is so dumb. And it was media that presented that to me because I, I don't care outside of that. And it felt like I was being told, like, look at race, look at race. You're a racist. Look at race, look at race. And I feel like the same thing with with feminism, because at 10 years old, you know, who's thinking about that? And we didn't have I guess we did like, you know, the girls club and the boys club. But it was never like, at least in my memory, this is a long time ago. But it wasn't a it was a competition, but it wasn't because we're better. You know, so that so the idea of feminism was never in my head. Um, but here, let's shelf that for, for a moment. Well, I think what you mean by that, too, though, is that gender relations were better and healthier when you were younger. And yes, younger it was a much cleaner relationship. Yeah. Okay. And OK, I may have lost my train of thought. It happens. Yeah, it's OK. No, well, yes. Uh, Okay, well, so say, I've seen that too. That growing up is that uh, I felt like in the late '90s as a kid, and then the 2000s that before we got this super woke feminism, probably like 2013 on, when like this uh -huh. almost like a fourth wave came about, things were a lot better between men and women. I used to pick up girls in 2000s, and I wasn't scared about getting falsely accused so much of any kind of this crazy nonsense that we see now with Me Too and all this crap, this witch hunt. And it was always possible, but, you know, it was a very minor thing. And, you know, it was a bunch of clear, clear consent in these things. No means no. And all this stuff. This was talked about in the Manister back then. The pickup community. Mm -hmm. And it was taught like, hey, you like, you know, follow the law, all this stuff. And now oh, okay. it's like, what are, what are the fucking rules? Like nobody even knows. Yes. You're, yes. you're one false accusation away from losing your whole life, getting kicked off the Internet, fired and starved to death on the street as mm -hmm. a man. That's what it feels like anyway as a young man today. And it sucks. So, yeah, because because that's how women are being raised at at 10 at 10 years old okay here I'm, I'm writing things down so i don't forget okay. 
I remember when I was a little girl, I've always been the person that was, that was about self-responsibility. So when I was in like third, fourth grade, if I would do something, cause I was kind of just distracting, I'd talk to a lot of people. And if someone got in trouble for what I did, I would always raise my hand and say, no, 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 that was my fault. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think I've always had that, that thinking of where's my part in this. So when feminism, when I started to be introduced with the idea that there are some women out there who are so uh, um, wrong in their thinking, when I when I say wrong, I mean that there's no logical way that they could have con- concluded this. Yep. Uh, I didn't want to be any any part of that. I mean, how could I? And it, children are right now being taught that men are bad. I'm gonna tell a little story if you don't mind. My stepdaughter, who is six, now seven, came home from, so my husband has full custody of his daughter. And when she goes to visit her mom, she came back last time and had a book, a little journal that said, I'm, uh, I'm a little feminist. Okay. And I found, yeah. And I found this book and I ran to my husband as if I had just found heroin in the house. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is going yeah. on over there? Pretty so I much you up. did. Conceptually, you found those like conceptual heroin. It, yeah. It's, it, yes, it's destructive to the mind. Yep. So I sat down with her, she's six. And I said, listen, you're too young to understand feminism. Oh yeah, and on the inside cover, it said the future is female. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I sat her down and I said, so we're gonna learn about feminism as you get older, but, and then I named all the great things that her dad is. Like, do you love this about him? He is, who, who's the strongest person in the house? Who is the best tickler? Who's so funny? Who, I mean, everything that's great about him. And she was like, you know, I love dad. He's, he's my favorite person. And then I named all the men influencers in our life. Like who else gives you piggyback rides and who else shows you flowers and herbs? It's the men. And then I named the good things about the women. And I said, so in the, when you're a big grown girl, do you want to be around good men? She's like, yes. I said, do you want to be around good women? Yes. So we crossed out. No, we just added male. So the future is male and female. Mm-hmm. Like that's all I can do. And I feel like I'm fr- I'm not frightened. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about this then. So we got, okay. we got the future is patriarchy here. Okay. Uh, talk to me about, you know, I think the future pay- is patriarchy is a really fantastic slogan for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. It's pretty recent. This is a brand new thing. So uh, talk to me about that. What are your feelings? What's your immediate reaction to the future of patriarchy? Is okay, good. good. L- let's get let's get back to that. Let's get back to the roles that we naturally have that bring us both harmony in the world that we that we live in and in the homes that we're in. Hmm. You know. So I've been I've been thinking about it like this. Have you ever done ballroom dancing? Uh, not much. Not a okay. Long time. And that, and, and that actually doesn't matter because anyone that's listening, if they haven't, they're going to be like, well, what about it? Okay. So when you yeah. ballroom dance with your partner, you have to have a lot of pressure. So it looks like it looks more flowy, but it is very structured. And the man has to put a lot of pressure on the woman because the woman has to be guided by the man. And, and that sounds like is, toxic masculinity. It's so toxic and it's so lovely. So the, the, we are relying on I need to rely on the man to guide me. And it seems to me that if I'm going to keep going with this analogy, I don't know if that's that's what it's called, that men are scolded for, for protecting us and guiding us in the most beautiful and um, important way. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And yep. And I can't, like the joy I feel uh, in my marriage and, and, and the glee that I have over, over men. I've been taking, uh, I'm doing free phone calls now for anyone that feels like I could help them at all. And I got emotional on the last call because he was talking about just how lost and how demonized masculinity is now. Yeah. And and it may, it actually makes me so sad that the most beautiful, um, natural, powerful state of my species, 
not my gender, but my species is being shit on when we actually need it and should be uplifting it. And, yep. and when I say uplifting, I'm, I mean women uplifting it because that, um, that doesn't, that doesn't demean me. You know what I mean? Like uplifting masculinity does not demean me. It just props me up as well because it is a true partnership. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of manosphere leaders that have said, uh, other content creators and YouTubers that say specifically patriarchy is actually very, very positive for women. uh Um, so that's one example of that, but even masculinity, I think is a force. It's very positive force in the world. And it has been since the dawn of our species. It's it is the and femininity has a mass obviously a massive role too. It's half of the human yes. race, mm -hmm. but masculinity I think is what pulled us out of the dirt and built civilization and families and empires and technology. Most things like that have been built by men, and those men were birthed and cared for by women. Yeah. So there there's a really amazing balance that human beings have, and that feminism I think is the root uh, and the most intense force we've ever seen mm -hmm. that is attacking that. And destroying that and it's super it's super dangerous i think if feminism doesn't die the century it's going to kill america in the west period i i yes i think it's yeah. well on the way yeah. i mean we're obviously seeing ramif ramifications of it right now yeah. can we come back from it i think yeah i think so yeah i agree yeah. but if it it's keeps not, the doom the doom and gloomers the black pillars like we're all fucking doomed like yeah maybe but probably not <laughs> well and i you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give up until <sighs> until it's done what yeah. the fat lady's singing I will okay. be that fat lady and I'll keep singing because yep. and the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people will, will say to me in my, in my comment section, shut up and go change the laws. But my thing is, is like, I don't have that much power. I believe in changing. My hope is that I will be able to change at least one individual female, right. To mm -hmm. think about things embrace her femininity, raise up masculinity. And then, and then there's one guy in the world who is masculine and ready, who has one more available woman. Mm -hmm. If I can change one woman, I'm happy. I'm not going to, I can't tackle every law. I'm sorry. Yep. If you think I'm that powerful, I, yeah. that's cool, but I'm, I no, found my niche. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And they, I think a lot of people have an unrealistic expectation and there are a lot of economists and philosophers and political legal philosophers that would tell you this, but it's not only difficult to change laws, it's specifically difficult. It's more hard to undo laws once they're made. Oh yeah. Which is where we're at. Yes. Which is why when a law gets passed it for anything, whether it's feminist related or not or whatever, it's very, very hard to get that undone later on unless it had a clause in it that it's been entirely All the you're, you're, Oh, there you are. Your audio got skewed for a second. Oh. All right, we're back. Uh, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, so it, it is it is really hard. But for example, there are some positive changes. Like Kentucky recently passed an equal default, equal shared parenting law in like about a year ago. Okay. And it's supposed to be like really, really good, like close to perfect. It's not perfect, but it's really good. And it's a model that the other 49 states now can look to and yes. start moving in that direction. And, you know, what if that takes now? What if we get 10 states over the next 15 years? That's pretty good. I mean, fuck. Like it's that's that's moving in the right direction, step by step. Feminists didn't win the war overnight. They took. They've been fighting for yeah. like, hundreds of years. Like, be patient, chill out. You know. I'm I'm totally with you. You know, when when people talk about um. Oh God, just how evil America is, and that we had slavery. My my point is always we're always, but as a civilization, we're a good people who wants to do good in general and mm -hmm. we're always trying to fix and and fine tune to become better and as long as we can keep staying on that fair-minded trajectory and goal mm -hmm. of of a, a more perfect union i mean this is like pretty yeah. explicit in the founding of the nation and these things yeah we've moved massively in that direction things are not perfect I and mean, they've never been perfect they never will be perfect uh -huh. these people that want this shit they're they're and especially the people that bitch about stuff that never happened to them or their parents or their grandparents it's like you're just fucking delusional yeah i don't like these people at all but i have a lot of questions i want to get through with you i want to go oh, through okay. these kind of hot takes this be all fun right. let's do it what is jennifer moleski's take uh you know two minute take on mctow i go back and forth you know i feel like it's the 80 20 rule the people that most represent MGTOW from what I've seen 
or I don't believe what MGTOW is really all about. Because I, I, I don't like people complaining no matter their situation. I'm very much about self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I understand any human, man or woman, but we'll talk about men, going their own way to like dust off, dust off and get strong and get clear and become the man they want to be to present to the world. Because, because unless, until you are fully uh, mature in mind, body, soul, spirit, you will let a woman rob you of, of that potential. You know, because it seems like there's a lot of men who are willing to like get like whatever you want, whatever you want. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Yeah, yeah. And they totally lose themselves. Yeah. And then when they it's fucking bad. When you see this shit, it's just like you want to vomit. You feel bad for these people, both of them. The woman hates it and the man fucking is hates it eventually too. Yes. And All then the they get they get out of a relationship that they were not happy in, right? And yeah. and then they're mad at you know what? I, the other reason I want women to get their shit together is so men don't have to yell at me, you know? Got it. <laughs> so you're, wait, you're like, this actually makes a lot of sense now. So you're like this figure they can just bitch at because they can't bitch at the woman who hurt them or something? I think sometimes. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense, yeah. I think sometimes. Yeah. And, I, you know, I guess I'll take it while you while you lick your wounds and and, and become powerful. But, yeah. but yeah, I want, I want, I believe in, in, being the best you can you're, be. you're like everybody's ex-girlfriend <laughs> fuck jennifer fake snake raw. Yeah. yeah i see the comments you get it's brutal it's fucked up oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but it's it's part of being i think a youtuber and it comes with the territory you're doing all right yeah it's fine yeah. uh so yeah i respect it i just don't respect the whining but i but i don't respect whining from any human yeah that's my take all right Moving on. Oh, I guess there's one more thing I'd like to say. I don't want anyone. I have a saying, and I say, um, watch what you watch what you buy because you you'll sell yourself anything. And I just am frightened at some people's. I hate. I hate. I hate. I hate. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're wrong. Everything is bad. You will buy into that, yeah. and there'll be a day I think that you'll be like, oh, I hate so much. I feel so heavy with hate and you might want to get out of that and it's going to take a long time for you to to do that mm -hmm. to and it's and it's all it's all because of how how entrenched you became in that rhetoric you know what i mean yeah i we yeah, don't it gets, it gets sucked into their own narrative basically yeah yeah it's like a, it's a bad cycle it's like a it's like a bottomless pit or a downward spiral yeah it doesn't feel it light yeah yeah there can be like little, there can be miniature, I think, cycles guys go through, kind of like the business cycle and economics and stuff, ups and downs. And that's pretty normal, I think, when guys find this manosphere community and all these things. But yeah, when they get stuck in these ruts for like just ridiculous periods of time or indefinitely, it's just fucked up. Yeah, it's stupid. We call it, we call it the, instead of the manosphere, George Bruno calls it the despairosphere. The despairosphere. Uh, yeah. You, you know what? I, I actually, when I was talking to George, I said, I think I, I think I brought this up, but I think this is a good example of what I don't want for people. Have you ever been like in a good mood and then someone kind of pissed you off, like the person you're with, whether it's a friend or or a girlfriend or a wife, and you're like just kind of pissed, you're just kind of pissed, but it feels kind of good to be pissed, and they want you to be not pissed anymore, like oh I'm sorry, and they try and they do that, they try to joke with you and try to get you out of the mood, but you're not ready to be done. You're kind of like, eh, and you almost want to laugh because they're being funny, but you don't want to. I feel like. People can be clear, I have a little bit of uh, understanding what you're saying, but I think this is more a woman thing. Like, oh, if, I feel no. like the intensity that guys have this is a little more, yeah. Yeah, but I know that men also kind of get mad at things, and they're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll they'll prolong the anger. But I'm I'm fearful that you got to savor the flavor. It's like chips, like potato chips. Okay, you have to savor the flavor, but I'm fearful uh -huh. that some men will savor the flavor for twenty years. You know, yeah. when it was just meant to be anger and used for a brevity. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm officially done answering that one. Holy God, you gotta nip it in the bud. Anthony yeah. got to say No, you're killing it. No, I'm gonna let you let you rent. This is great. Yeah. <sighs> Talk to me about nice guys. What do nice guys not get? These dudes who think they can be nice to women to get in their pants and be these subservient little like errand boys and or beta orbiters and 
There's white knights. There's all kinds of variations of this. You see it in real life. You see it on the internet. You're, I'm sure you've seen it all over your channels, Instagram and stuff. People defending you and maybe when you don't even need it, obviously. Mm -hmm. So what do nice guys not get about women fundamentally? Well, I, I think there's a difference between being like genuinely nice versus... You mean like, you mean like kind? Yeah. You know, I have manners. I really like civility and I, I don't want civility. At least I don't want anyone listening to think that I'm entangling civility with being too nice because I do believe in civility. What nice guys. In, do you believe in savagery too? Men being aggressive and assertive and savage. Yes. And I think that can be taken to, in, to an extreme where it's not good, welcome or good yeah, for totally. society. And I think it mostly when allowed is. Useful. Oh yeah. You did that whole video on fucking the war out of men or something like that? Yeah, that was hysterical. Everyone loved that in the atmosphere. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Um, but wait, what was the question? Oh, yeah, nice guys. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back to my dancing. I feel like yeah. nice guys are like, hey, would you like to dance with me? I'm a really good dancer, and I'll buy you a drink also if you dance with me. And then, you, and then they're like, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you can buy me a drink and I'll dance with you. And when you set up, it's like wimpy. You know what I mean? It's like wherever, well, we can go in this direction for dancing or we can go in this direction. That's what nice guys will do to try to please you. Like wherever you want to go, I'll go there with you. But women need that pressure. And and Yeah, what I, they really want is they want to go where you want to go. Well, they they hopefully, well, women want to know or think that they have that a man has chosen them out of tons of tons of women mm -hmm. and when it and what i see nice guys doing or a version of it is finding a woman that they really like or are interested in and then being like i declare myself for you you're worth it and women are like ah you have no other yeah. options yeah oh god it's am like, i the last like, person it's like bear repellent for women it's <laughs> it is certainly repellent and i think that's I mean, I would, I would have to know the exact terms of nice guy because I have my own version and maybe we're on the same side of that, but. I think so. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the niceness that we're, I'm referring to is not, it's not very genuine. 80% of it's disingenuine. A little bit of it maybe is, but it's misplaced. <laughs> but a lot of it is just like, it's it's like very, they call it uh, Dr. Robert Glover, one of our speakers, a marriage and family therapist too. He calls it covert contracts. I don't know if he coined the term or not, but this is one example of it. It's these little secret thing is that the nice guys do in their head and they're like for example there was a i don't know if you ever seen rick and morty but this little cartoon character he has like a punch card of like being nice to a girl and he's like punching it as he's being nice to her and then to have sex with her and this is basically this is a perfect illustration of a covert contract because it's like it's like they're they're storing up these favors that if for some girl and then they're like surprise i want to fuck and the girl's <laughs> like oh my god get away from me you know i don't want your evil beta sperm i hope you die like it's a total mind fuck like for that i get it for, and these dudes are like i don't get it what happened it worked in the, the disney movie and uh, uh that's it's funny so, it's fucked yeah I mean, yeah. a lot of times, too, the guys, uh, they were lied to by feminism and crap, and they actually, they really think this is going to work. They, they're not doing it because they're like, they, they're, they're not doing it because they think it's going to blow up in their face. They're doing it even as it's blown up in their face 20 times before. They're doing it because they actually think it's going to work this time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of insane because they're doing the same shit over and over again. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Nice guys need to know. I mean, okay, okay. How about this? You have a nice guy, a genuinely nice guy, who has done shit for the past year to become an interesting human being to men and women, right? Now you got this fucking nice, interesting dude. Now he starts to bring, now he starts to become a magnet for women. Okay. Mm. And now when he meets a woman who's great, he can still be nice to her, but she can smell on him competition. Why is there competition? Because he's worth it. And he's not going to be a dick to her, but he's going to be, uh, with manners, let her know that she's not the chosen one yet because he has choices. The so, chosen one. The chosen. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, does that make, am I saying that in a way that makes sense? I think so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. That's it. I want to move on to, I have some more questions I want to get through, but actually I forgot about, almost forgot about this stuff. Let's pull this up.
So, yeah, we'll do this one. Okay. So, the one and only Tommy Lauren, as you know, I don't know if you did you do a response video to her? I guess I, I could check. I did. Uh huh. Yeah. Was- I mean, she went off in a rant. You know, she turned 28 recently. She went off in this rant bitching about men and blah, 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 and how great she is and her friends. And then I tweeted some responses at her when I was on uh, in South Dakota recently. I, I don't even know what the fuck. I, I still have to search what I tweeted. I don't even know what I tweeted at her. And somehow she found it and she fucking blocked me. So the, the, I found this out on Saturday. I was dying. Uh, it was really funny to me. But talk to me about Tommy Lauren and what you thought about that, just in brief, without everyone. Uh, by the way, there's a link in the description, guys, to go check out and subscribe to Jennifer's channel. And you should do that. But without getting into your whole Tommy Lauren response, what was the gist of what you thought about her her screeching? Um, I was I was embarrassed for her. You know, Thanks. like I, I I said I don't like whining, right? If you have to whine a little bit inside to to figure out what the root problem is, really, fine. But she wasn't. Ugh. Mostly, I felt bad because she was probably raised in a time where she was sold that those that the things that she was attracted to in men were the same thing that a man was looking for. Yes. This is a really important point women need to hear. And it's not the same thing. (laughs) When I did that video, um, there was a lot of guys who said, (laughs) um, Tatiana sounds awesome. (laughs) You know, because remember in the, in the rant, she was like, if you want to be with Tatiana, who's just as nice and gets along and doesn't have this strong ambition, then go find her. And guys are like, Tatiana sounds like a cool chick, you know, because men don't want to come home and be and and well, I can't speak for all men because there are certainly men who do want this, but I think you can can speak generally though. I think most men are going to side with what you're about to say that they don't want some, uh, you know, attorney who works 60 hours a week and is, Super strong, independent, you know, yeah. ultra ambitious woman. It's like, uh, no. Um, well, I want a woman who knows how to like sew and cook gluten free cookies. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, that's what I said in the fuck the roll out of men video. Like, you're supposed to be a home. You're not yep. supposed to be. Listen, I, I, <sighs> men are aggressive. Mm-hmm. more aggressive than than women and i don't mean like but they do they they have their own i love to watch men it's so neat because they they push themselves you know there's always strength that i'm witnessing with men and and that's what they do out in the world because it's important to to have wins and and set goals and achieve goals and provide for a family and be like the beast of the family but yep. when you walk in the door you don't want to beast against your woman that's when that is the time that you have you have earned the time to spend with a woman who will be there for you and calm you and rub your shoulders and and honor and praise and feel glee for everything you've accomplished out in the world. But when you have a woman who's also, uh, well, it's internalized, internalized misogyny. I mean, you just don't understand. You need right. feminist reeducation is what you need. You need to be, you go to a reeducation camp. Bernie camp should be good for you. Oh, like to stop being a man. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just, I'm just trying to I've dry humor today. Got it. Sorry. I'm sorry. Keep sorry I didn't get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I hate when people don't get what I'm saying. Um, So my apologies, but yeah, I have, that's what I think. That's what men want. They want this awesome, awesome woman who know, who has the gluten-free cookies or the full fat cookies or the butter cookies and is sewn and darn the socks and, and look how pretty, look how pretty the house looks when you pull up and the garden looks great and the roses are pretty and we're having fresh cucumbers and, Mm -hmm. and this is my home and this is why I go out into the world and, uh, yeah, these are the highest quality. The woman you're referring to that do these things and that that advocate for that and then actually do that, they're the highest quality woman you can find, in my opinion, or at least one one category of that. Uh, and that's most of them today in America just have totally, totally forgotten that. Not only have they forgotten that, they have been brainwashed to be hostile and aggressive towards anything to do with living that way. Yes, like it's, like it's evil and the devil, and it's. 
just sexism and blah blah blah. I was endless Nazi male supremacist Nazi bullshit, and it's like just ridiculous. Like my grandma was was a, an example and a positive of these things, uh -huh. and she was the happiest woman I ever met. Yes, I mean for you know until she died at ninety one years old. Yeah, and they had a lot of grandbabies and babies and all these things and lived a great life. And when you compare that to the bitchy cat ladies in the cat kingdoms of today, drowning in cheap cheap boxed wine and cat hair, it's like you've just ruined your life. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <sighs> and it, it just sucks. Yeah, and a lot of them are just fucking, they're doomed. I know, but and I don't want to make excuses, but I want everyone to remember mm -hmm. that the human mind is so malleable. Oh, yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, think about the fucking Nazis. Like... All that took was a couple years of of brainwashing, and then and then everyone's a well, murderer. Economic, economic collapse too. I mean, the whole yeah. the, the money and all that shit. The world was from money, so there you had a couple things occurring, but yeah, it was all psychological stress. And, and then you radicalize them, and before you know, it, people are in fucking gas chambers. Yes, and and that's what I. Ugh. It's women believing this and then believing it more and then men kind of getting on board to what, get their dick wet or because they really think it. And then, and then there's this pressure and then there's people like you and me who are like, no, no, please, there's a better way. And, and hopefully we can get into the minds and start them vibrating on, on that knowledge mm. instead of the brainwashing. Yep. Almost anything other than feminism will take at this point. I mean, this shit is so toxic. I don't, other than communism, it's hard to name something more toxic than feminism. And the thing is with feminism, it has infiltrated every part of American and Western life in America, Canada, the UK, Australia, all these Western nations. It's everywhere. It's in school. It's in the home. Uh -huh. It's in the workplace. It's in the government. It's in the military. It's in the entertainment. It's in TV. It's in movies. Yes. It's in children's books. It's in fucking everything all the yes. time, every day of the fucking week. And it's the propaganda is so heavy. It's, well, uh, it's I'm, beyond, I'm it's beyond Orwellian. Six yeah. years old. I'm a little feminist. Oh, that reminds me. I should get you. Check this out. Huh? A little book you should give that kid. My Red Hat. It's and a kid's a book. About it's a kid's book, yeah. A modern anti-bullying book. Uh, my friend Socrates and his uh, buddy, I forget the other guy's name, uh, Morgan Bloomberg, they wrote it. Yeah, they were actually met at a convention and they put this book together. It's on Amazon. Oh, cool. It's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it's fucking super dope. Oh, here, I'll do a plug for something that's not mine. For any parents out there, there's a book series called The Tuttle Twins, mm -hmm. and it teaches about um, self-responsibility and uh, it's anti-socialism, right? And, and knowing your rights and doing the right thing and following the non-aggression principle and voluntary relationships. Anyway, it's, it's pretty tight. That was a side, but... Well, speaking of the... So we were talking about here, though, with women and what they, you know, nurturing in the home, these things uh, for a man to come home to and all these things. So talk to me about, you're probably familiar with this meme. This was put out by, uh, I forget her full name, but the transformed wife at thetransformedwife.com. Oh, she's cute. Yeah. Well, this is a meme she put out probably two years ago, two and a half, and it says men prefer dead free virgins without tattoos. Uh -huh. this, one, this one's super viral when she put it out on her, work, her she's like a WordPress blog. And uh, it was all over. The, it was a huge rage for like months. The feminists just went ballistic with this thing. Sure, they did. Probably goes the girl's cute, and then it's the the font Super is cute. nice. Uh huh. And then, and then, and then it so says cute. something that's like <laughs> to yeah. the feminist or the yeah the feminist. Well, this is actually the basis too of make women great again. This was the iconic image I used in my speech when I revealed the slogan and the hat. Oh. And I thought it as a meme anyway, and a, a distillation of like at least the direction women should head in. This was fantastic. And the reason it pissed so many women off, I think, the feminists, is that men do prefer dead free virgins without tattoos almost universally, like 99% well, of us. Anthony, it's not only that, but it's that most of the women that have read that have tattoos, are in heavy debt, and aren't, aren't virgins. Not so it's, close. Yep. It's, it's hitting their identity yep. of what they already are. They can't even, they can't even, well, they could undo it with um, debt and getting tattoos removed, but. Yeah. Do you think do you think this is a good direction for women to head in? Yeah, I yes, I think this is a, a far more important and holistic um goal that would probably resonate with women more. You know what, Anthony, what I see the problem no, what I see one of the problems is is that there's no I hate to say this, but there's no like cool role models for for girls about 
femininity. You yep. know, it's like, the, and, and who they have as role models are boobs out and, and just like super loud hair and loud makeup and aggressive and, and screaming and powerful and like Cardi and B that, and Molly Cyrus. Yes. Yes. So they just, they watch that and they're like, Oh, well look at they're they're pretty and they're getting money and fame and I'll do that too. And there's not any, there's, oh, I can't say that. There's just far, join, just join OnlyFans. You get a lot of money. Look at that one trick. That chick just made $2 million on OnlyFans. I like, know. I just watched a thing on that. And then she bailed. She didn't even fulfill her promise. Yeah, so then, she, yeah, yeah. It stink. But there's a rule for that Brifold's law, they call it. I think it's like Brifold. when a woman gets Brifold's law, it's not even from the manosphere. The manosphere just picked up on it years ago. Brifold, like B R I F F A L U T. Brifold's law. And it's basically when a woman has maximized. I'm not, I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna butcher the definition of this, but okay. when a woman has maximized her relationship and no longer gets benefit from a man, uh, and this is like in, not like mammals, not just human beings, she'll like just ditch. And that's kind of I'm surprised no one's done an article on that yet. But that's kind of what that uh, what was her name? Uh, the, oh, the girl. Yeah, I don't know. The actress, whatever the uh -huh. fuck. Her name. Yeah, Bella Thorne, I think was her name. Uh -huh. uh, I'm quote man that, but I think it was that. But yeah, she just got all the money and then bailed. Uh -huh. Why would she follow through on it? Who cares? Like, assuming she's in any legal trouble, then she'll just be like, whatever. <laughs> Adios, bitches. Give me that money. Uh, it's like dine and ditch when you're at a restaurant, like dine and dash. Yeah. Like, not pay for it with two million dollars. <laughs> I know, and 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 that's what I'm I'm trying to reach is. Okay, guess what? Dine and dash is illegal. Not fulfilling your obligation, your side of an ob obligatory contract that you have signed. Mm -hmm. It's illegal, but Should I be. want to touch people's personal integrity. Like, I wish I could talk to her and be like, I mean, like, what about your soul? Does that echo that that's okay to do? Yep. You know, I mean, I think there's always going to be a portion of the female population that will do things like this, stripping, hooking, escorting, call girls, uh, cam girls, porn stars. Uh -huh. But I think what's happened is that we've seen that segment that used to be much smaller, the population, that behavior has expanded into the bell curve. It's expanded into, the, this is, I saw one of my speakers last year, Alexander Cortez, talk about this. And I thought it perfectly encapsulated in his speech. Uh, just type Chad Zilla into our channel and it should pull up. <laughs> this dude is like legit Chad Zilla. He's like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's like a sexual Tyrannosaurus, like predator. Okay. Uh, he's ridiculous. Um, anyway, Giga Chad, super Giga Chad, but he, he did a great presentation on this seriously about this issue and it, i really think they hit the nail on the head that i really don't have a problem with porn stars existing and hookers and strippers and i think prostitution should be legalized from a freedom perspective hmm. i don't think the government has any role to dictate what consenting adults are going to do in a transaction like that and uh yeah. but that's my libertarian thing but that behavior that's spreading to a huge chunk of the population is not normal and it's not healthy and it's not good and there needs to be social cultural pushback against that. This this is fucked up and it's gonna probably ruin your life very quickly. Yes. So. Well, and I'm all about like I want you to I want you to rest your weary head every night knowing that you made every every decision that you made was with integrity. Because because there will come a day of reckoning where you will have to look at yourself in the mirror and go, I could have done better for the past 10 years. You know, so I want to wake women up eh, be like yeah. just start doing good today and then stack yep. that day on another day and another and another yep yeah women got to change like my thing actually with 22 convention i wanted to pull that up too that's how we connected basically you know the make women great again convention um you know a lot of people in the media they think there's two things they miss they really missed when they attacked the so we had all the media and stuff and they went after it but two of the things they missed, I think, was that they focused too much on the convention itself as a physical conference. Okay. And they didn't do enough research into what we're actually doing, which is filming, professional filming like a TV studio, the speeches, which we then re, you know have indefinitely for life, so long as the lights stay on and civilization exists. And they then replay on the internet forever. Uh -huh. We have speeches we filmed 10 years ago that get viewed 500 times a day, wow. all around the world, every day, every day. I want to change the course of generation for America and for women and for men and for these relationships, gender relations. Mm -hmm. And the videos that would do that, the conference itself, it doesn't matter how many women come. I don't care. As long as we have the money to do it, which we do, it's all that matters. What matters to me then is getting the videos on the internet 
and the feminists will get triggered and start screaming, whatever, and they'll spread the videos and they'll reach millions of women again. And my goal is to not even change the course of millennial women, which I just don't think a lot of them are going to do it for whatever reason, psychologically and all that. But I really want to influence Gen Z women. And that's also what the media and these the attackers, these feminists missed. My focus is on Gen Z and younger. What do they call them? Gen Z or something? I don't know. Yeah, the young, these young girls, like they're going to be, I want them when they're 18, you know, soon, or maybe if they're 13 now or 14, uh -huh. when they're 18, they can go on YouTube and find these videos that are floating around the internet and stuff. And they can make a different decision. Because right now, women lack so much, like you're saying with the, the feminine role models, there are fucking none. Where's the education to be a good woman today? Yeah. Unless you have a grandmother or a tight community like the Mormons or something, uh -huh. you don't have that. You have nothing except Cardi B and fucking OnlyFans. That's how you learn how to be a woman. I mean, holy fuck. I know. So. Like I was thinking, I was thinking about my daughter in in nine years when she's 16. I thought it'd be so cool to have like a sweet 16 party of of women that are actually feminine and and have a skill set and and yeah. honor their role to like come almost like a secret little society because I want her to feel special and I want her to be to be taken in from women who aren't who aren't singing the praises of feminism we're not like now listen you don't let your you don't have a guy do this you don't you make the decisions you know like but to have her influence strongly like it's so important because it is in uh it's okay to be a woman. It's actually good to be a woman. I think it's a very positive thing. It's so thing. special to yep. act like it. Yeah. I think it's fucking great. Yeah, when I went to Poland last year for a convention, I got to see not only beautiful fit women everywhere, which is fucking awesome. No fat girls. No pajama pants. No yoga pants. None of this bullshit. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, they were very feminine. They were feminine on the outside. They, The way they dressed, the way they carried themselves, and they were feminine on the inside. And I was like in heaven. It was like, it was like 1950s America with iPhones. I was like, this is fucking great. And women are very responsive and like they hate feminism and it's stupid, like all this stuff. Uh -huh. They love the hat. I was walking around with the hat and shit. Uh -huh. Can I ask but, you a question? Just absolutely. Really What's up? What is what is your definition of femininity? Of femininity? Yeah. Like when you That's said that these women were feminine inside and out. Can you yeah. explain that? Sure. I'll give my best philosophic take of it. And it okay. would be this similar for masculinity too. Okay. So I would see femininity as a woman acting in a way that is directly in accordance with her own biological and evolutionary nature, evolutionary nature as a woman. I'm not religious, so there's no really religious components to that. But I don't have a problem with people who are like, well, God made nature. And then nature, you know, femininity is this and that and all that. A lot of that's actually very good. But I see that femininity as being a woman and in alignment with your nature as a woman, as has occurred through evolution for a couple hundred thousand years. And specific again to your biology and how you're different from a man. And for a man, it's the same thing. It's being in alignment with your own nature as a man, with the way you've evolved, the way all of your paternal ancestors behaved, how that's influenced you epigenetically, the way they ate, the way they fucked, the way they lived, the way they behaved, the way they engaged with other human beings. So I think it's a really couple hundred thousand years of history for men uh, to be masculine and then for women to be feminine. Mm -hmm. And we've lost sight of that today massively. And if we don't figure this out soon, I think the civilization is going to collapse. Western civilization specifically, where it's the worst. I'm really like, happy. I'm really happy with your articulation of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, that was really well worded. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is great. I told you we'd have a good time. This is great. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate you two coming out to the 22 convention. I've invited oh. a few different YouTubers and influencers. Oh. It's tough because of COVID. I mean, so many flights are fucked up and all this bullshit. So I know, and people are frightened. And but I think it's important, you know, like like you said, it's not so much about the convention. But the thing is, is this is, it is. It's going to take physical effort to get there, which means you have a pay in. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to be around physically and with the energy of like minded people. And that's really important for like, like I'm getting a lot of energy from this conversation. I feel really good right now. So being, so being around other people, all you're going to do is like fill your energy up. Like, yes. Okay. I'm not alone in this, in this way of thinking. I'm not alone in my goal. Yes. And then they can go out into the world and every one of us can have this like unique light and hopefully 
will draw some people into it and then we can all come back yep. and become strong and and that's this why is, it is this important. is a this is exactly how the men feel when they attend the convention. When they leave, they say these exact kind of things. Mm. Uh, it's so rare. I mean, so many for men, we've seen, you know, there used to be bowling alleys and barbershops and all these kind of things and make a meet up. There's very little of that today. A lot of that's been either it just has died off for whatever reason or feminists and women have infiltrated it, uh, kind of men's clubs and all these things. Mm -hmm. And the Manosphere and live events from the Manosphere, including and especially, I think, 21 convention for the men, uh, is a resurgence of that. And it's an exclusively male space. It's a safe space to be masculine, to be a man. It's a very safe space, very fine space. But they get to be around men for days, four or five days even. And they get to be talk about all these issues, mm -hmm. how it's negatively affecting men and America and gender relations. But then also the positives of what they can do to combat it, to make themselves better, to be better men, to be the best men they can be, to be the best fathers they can be at the patriarch tradition. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of you know looking at the negativity of the world, and then also a lot of the positivity and what they can do for themselves, how they can work together. That book I showed you, the the little my red hat, is a perfect example of that. A speaker uh -huh. and an, an attendee met at the conference. The attendee had graphic artist skills. It's a really amazing little book, all the artwork and stuff. Uh -huh. And they worked together to create the book, and it took like a year, maybe not even. And then they had this fucking book, and now it's for kids. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's the first kids book to ever come out of the Manosphere. That's awesome. Historic, wow. historic. That's cool. But it's but it's energy too, like you're talking about. I'm not in all this woo woo stuff, but I don't mind it as no, an analogy. But, but it's it's a very positive energy, and they feel they just feel fucking awesome when they leave because it's an yeah. awesome experience. I mean, energy is real, woo woo or not. I mean, someone can put you. Someone can oh, yeah. you can feel that, or you can feel happy, and that oh, vibrates yeah, yeah. inside of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some of the guys I know, some of the guys I like, they go into this stuff, and it's like super far, like. I don't know, all this deep, super vibrational energies, the universe and this and that. Uh, it is what it is. I don't know. I've seen enough things in my life that, hey, I'm open to a lot of things. You know, if it happens, if it if that ends up being true, hey, cool, whatever. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I I get that. Um, I don't I don't want to feed the lust fires of um, of the problems of the world. But but, you know, you were talking about your men's convention. Mm -hmm that it's it's a place it's a safe space for men I, like i have a meetup and i always called it a safe space for people who hate safe spaces like you can say whatever you want you're yeah. fine you know but there was um i i have been a fine dining server for a long time and there's a guy who a uh, super awesome dude tons of money like just dripping with money and he there's a club here in colorado springs that is only men and it costs the money to get into and that is really important it's just a place for the dudes to go and talk shit that they wouldn't say in front of their wives or whatever and they had had the same bartender for like 30 years and he retired and then they hired a woman wow so all these men are paying all this money for the for the privilege of being around each other and then and then, and then there's this woman that gets hired That's so and now stupid. it's, it's so bad. And yep. it, you know, they're like, yeah, I could probably say things, but I'm just not comfortable anymore, you know, right. because women are weird. I know they didn't say that, but I'm saying that, you know, anymore you could say men and, men and women are men and women are different. This is a foundational saying we have in the manosphere and it was pioneer, I don't know about pioneer, but spearheaded by Andrew, the private man who died of unfortunately eyeball cancer a couple of years ago. One of our speakers really rare. Yeah, uh, he was. He loves saying this, and he was just all about it. Men and women are different. Men and women are different. Men and women are different. How different? How similar? That's a debate. But they're different. They're fundamentally different in important ways. And when you bring a woman, yeah, into a men's space like that, it, it tends to ruin it very quickly. There can be ways around that. Like you know, I'll let my sister attend the conference for the men, but she stays out of the way, and people get to know who she is, and they they trust and respect her just to a big degree. Uh -huh. Some of the wives will let come into the conference, but. We're very, very, very selective about any woman coming into the conference. They have to be have like a very specific reason that they're there and know, and know somebody. Mm -hmm. So they not we don't just, we don't let women come to the conference otherwise. The answer is no. And also with the women's conference, no men are allowed to attend the 22 convention. I want it to be a space for women to be feminine and not have. There'll be men speakers. You know, we're going to do the mansplaining, 100% mansplaining, which is wonderful. It's a woman need. They love mansplaining, but and they need mansplaining. I think today more than ever. But also in terms of the audience and their get togethers and things like that, it's for them. I don't want them to have a woman's space mm -hmm. and they're gonna figure their shit out. And mm -hmm. that's gonna be a very positive feminine thing. Able to be sewing, you know, who knows what, making sandwiches, like. 
I make a bean sandwich. I just want That's everyone good. to do that. That's good. Yeah. I'm just trolling at this point, but uh, I know, but no. sandwiches Wait. are important. You oh, know, yeah. it's funny because my my husband came in. We were talking about something <clears throat> about masculinity or something, and he said, "Whatever, just make me a sandwich." And I was like, "Oh, well, what kind do you want?" And he's like, "No, I'm just kidding." I'm like, "Oh, I was like all ready to be like, oh, whatever you want. We only have ham, but I can go to the store for turkey." I mean, I was yeah. really ready to jump on that, but I never, I wouldn't see that as a negative. Yeah. So we, I know you got to wrap up and you got to go in a few I minutes. I do. Yeah. But is there, uh, is there anything you want to, any last points or? I had like another 20 questions I wanted to get oh. through. We made, it, we made it through, we made it through uh, quite a few things. We got the Tommy Lauren, the MGTOW, the nice okay. guys. I guess the last thing is, uh, do you have any kind of comments on Make Women Great Again and the 22 convention that, you know, went viral this year and hit? We had a lot of media, like, I, you know, I was saying, not just Piers Morgan. Uh, from the marketing to the speakers, like when you first saw this, what was your thought about Make Women Great Again? Unlimited babies and hundred make your raise your femininity by five hundred percent. I mean, this was well, so upsetting to so many women. I've just I had such a great time laughing about it. <laughs> no, when I see when I see this, I think of like it's about time. Because okay. Because it seems like all the women's groups, I call them goddess groups. Like, oh Jennifer, you should join our goddess group. And then we're going to teach you and, and support you for being an entrepreneur and like killing it, you know, which fine. I, I don't, that's fine. But I told my, my good friend, my female friend, I said, let's start a women's group that is like, that teaches us how to sew and, you know, pointers for, for cooking and just all the array of things to talk about as a, as a woman, because there's not that right now. So with this, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's just a welcomed and uh, rare thing yeah. to see. It's same with the convention for men, honestly. Like I, I've i met, in the past couple of years, I've met men that host men meetups, right? The last guy that I met that said, oh yeah, we ha I host a, a men's meetup about, ma about masculinity. I'm like, oh, like what about it? He's like, well, we just talk about how we have to rein in our toxic masculinity. Oh, I, said, I, I hate your group. I hate your group. <laughs> yeah. What an idiot. These are, yeah, these are not men's groups. These are soy boy, little baby boy, beta boy groups. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. We make fun yeah. of these guys a lot. It suck. It's sad, though. Like We call them vichy males all the time. They're vichy males. Like the vichy French. They're the vichy males. Oh, like a vichy swat or something. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. No, they're traitors. I mean, it's they're they're suicidal in some ways, like uh, genetically and as uh, culturally suicidal. It's, it's beyond stupid to hit to hate on your own. Like, I don't think women should hate femininity. Like, that's fucking dumb. But that's what feminists do. They yeah. hate women who want to be women. They hate women who act like women. They hate women who like being feminine and like being girly and like being mothers and pursuing, prioritizing motherhood, for example, over career, and over education, which biologically makes perfect sense, given that you have peak fertility at 22, all these things. Mm -hmm. They just scream and, you know, you know, Nazi, 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 or whatever the fuck, you know, they hear this stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. But I really love the... Uh, I mean, it sounds like the breath of, you know, you're saying it's a fresh and a rare thing. And I really think that's a big part of why it went viral. The mansplaining in particular, I thought that was like the final touch I put on the page. And I was like, yeah, man, because I knew they're going to call it that. I'm like, absolutely fucking super yeah, mansplaining. Beat him to the punch on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You got to, you got to, you got to get ahead of him like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, you know, final question then, do you think women today, do they need mansplaining? Is that like one of the most important things they can get? Well, they need to listen to, um, I think they need to open their mind to the idea that the path that they're on might not be the right one or the one that causes happiness for them or men or children. And I should think- they, Should they listen to men and masculine influences? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, just open your mind just for a minute and just, and just listen. And I think it is very important instead of like the guys that, you know, when I would say that I, I, I don't like feminism and they were saying things like, I want all women to be raped and how, how dare I, and I'm the worst woman ever. Like I, I don't listen to these men, listen to some men, some men. All right. Fuck. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show today. And, it was a blast. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. We should do another one sometime. We'll be at the I, event. I mean, we'll yeah, hang out I, I would be down, you know, because this was fun. And sometimes 
you know, I'm always in a good mood, but some, some phone calls are happier than others, but this is very uplifting for me. And I, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I appreciate your time and appreciate coming out to the event. Everyone else, make sure you check out her channel. Uh, you can type Jennifer Molesky into the YouTube search bar, or you can click the link in the description underneath uh, this video and I'll probably put one in the comments too. Also check out our interview, which is a lot of videos, but Mr. George Bruno is a very good friend of mine and a uh, very Italian, very good conversation they had. Check that out for sure. Mm -hmm. Faux show. Sure. Right, we're going to hop off the air. Everyone, appreciate you tuning in live. Smash the like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next broadcast whenever I feel like it. Oh, actually, that'll be tomorrow with Jesse Lee Peterson. Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah, he's All right, we're going to hop off the air. Be good, stay on. See you okay. guys.